Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Lucky Tackle Box today. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down what's coming in January, what's coming in February's box. You should have already received these if you're subscribed to the Panfish Box, but I wanna show you how to break them down, the equipment I throw them on, and when and when not maybe to use some of these. So let's open this first one. January, hey, look it, I marked it right there just so I'd remember and do it in order, but I had no idea when I closed the box. So let's crack it open. There's the catalog right there. You always want to you always want to read Fish Hound magazine right here, the little Lucky Tackle Box one. There's really cool articles in here uh, that they break down a lot of times in regards to these products. In the links to uh, some of the other videos are in here, so make sure to check those out, guys. Let's crack this open. You always have a card here with what you received in the box, so let's stick that under there. All right, first bait I pick up the Z-Man original chatter bait and this is the micro series right here these are very very good at catching big red ears from my experience uh, they work good for catching crappie too they have a ton of vibration that skirt on there really flares up a lot but you see that bear hook on the back you always want to put a trailer whether it's a spinner bait, whether it's a chatter bait, you always want to run a trailer on there. So you want to match it up something, something else with like a chartreuse or a white. So when you look at pure chartreuse right here, this is a good color when the water's a little bit dingy or a little bit dirty and you want vibration and you want a color that's really bold that stands out. And a lot of the time when the water's real green too, you got a lot of algae in your water, chartreuse can also be uh, a really, really good color. Now this is more on the medium side of panfish baits so I don't want to throw it on an ultra light with two pound test I'm probably gonna throw it on a light spinning rod with four to six pound test on there I like to use copolymer lines which is not fluorocarbon which is not braid it's kind of a mixture of the two most of your affordable lines that you find on the fishing market are copolymer lines so I prefer to throw that micro chatter bait on a roughly six foot to seven foot six. I mean, you can throw them as short as five foot rods. It doesn't really matter too much. You wanna make a long cast with a micro chatterbait and you wanna cover water. You can count it down. If you wanna fish it deep, let it fall all the way to the bottom, slow roll it back to the boat to get it down along the bottom. You wanna fish it near or shallow, as soon as it hits the water, uh, reel it up right then and you can keep it shallow. So you have a lot of control with that bait. Puts off, puts off a ton of displacement. This is not for your super small panfish. This is more of like a, a trophy hunting panfish. Uh, yellow perch, big red ear, big crappie. Uh, you're probably gonna catch the majority of the bigger ones on a bait like that. Oh, that being said, with that, okay, if it's calm and clear, this is probably not the bait choice you want to use. Calm and clear, probably not the deal. If you see them bedding, they still will bite that. But that's more of an overcast, dirty water, um, windy day, that bait will tend to excel. The BWA, I think that's the 2.5 tail gunner. The 2.5 tail gunner, little tiny, subtle movement swim bait right there. Now, I'm gonna rig these on jig heads. I'm gonna rig it, probably the heaviest I'll go on a jig head is an eighth ounce. Um, I'm not sure, probably a 16th, but 164th is a little too light, so from the eighth ounce to up to there um, is gonna fit that category for me. Now, when you look at a small swim bait like this, a lot of the time you have to reel them at a certain speed to get that tail to kick. The tail gunner does really, really well at slow speeds, and you find that a lot of the time with grubs too. Very subtle, natural color, clear, calm days like it's right out behind me you probably see the water slick out there it's sunny my water's clear right now that is going to be a better bait choice it's more subtle it's more natural when it's clean water and subtle day they get a really good look at the bait so that's where you want to go with something more natural like that on a little tiny jig head um, if I throw up to an eighth ounce I might throw it on that light spinning rod if I'm throwing it anything lighter than an eighth ounce, I'm probably gonna throw it on an ultralight with either two or four pound. But my ultralight, I usually go two, my light I go four, and my medium light I go six or eight pound. Uh, but that's a really good choice uh, for that little setup right there. So I'll probably throw it this afternoon. From there, the original wobbler, the Goldie. Little uh, little diving crankbait right here. Now here's, pretty, here's a pretty cool deal here. Today is the beginning of March. 
So there's going to be crappie spawning probably eh, eight to five feet. This is going to get right over their head and I can bump this through timber. It's got a really nice erratic diving action and it really noses down quite a bit. So when you run a crankbait, what you want to notice is, is it diving like this or is it diving like this? Because if you look at the angles not much, you know that you might not want to hit timber because those hooks can touch. But if it's running like this, you know that you can probably bounce it through timber a lot safer and get those reaction strikes for those panfish hiding in the timber. Um, this is where I'm going to want to make a little longer cast, so I'm going to throw it on that light spinning rod again uh, with either four to six pound test line. More than likely four, I'm going to get a little longer cast with the lighter line, and it's going to get deeper too. The lighter line, it's thinner diameter, your bait will run deeper versus a thicker. So if you find yourself getting stuck in the grass too much, but there's like a fine in between, uh, throw it on like a medium a medium light with six to eight pound line and it'll lift that crankbait up for you So you do have options tiny treble hooks. You don't want to pull too hard You want to take your time and set your drag real light um, a solid color like this <coughs> It's got kind of a Kind of like a gold with a little red accent and a black back. This kind of looks like a juvenile uh, molting crawfish so or a sooty crawfish or um, you know, signal crawfish, which tend to be more brownish gold in those cleaner rivers. If you guys live near a river or a stream with running flowing water, a lot of the time the crawfish look more like that color right there. So you could probably utilize that in that situation. I was wondering what I did with the box. What else do we got? Here we go. Little pink grubs. This is the, the little light jig heads. I'm going to throw these on. Now, when you look at something pink like this, one of the most popular fish for pink is trout. Planter trout love pink. Guess what else loves pink? Crappie. For some reason, I don't do too well on pink for the other species, but for trout and for crappie, a little pink grub like this can work phenomenal. This is the Crave Baits little grub right here. Check out some cool underwater footage I put on there. Um, the lighter jig head, the super light jig head, you have to move this at a fairly decent speed to get that tail to kick. And I've heard people complain, oh, you have to reel too fast on that grub to get it to kick. Well, there's a contrary to that. Now, there's a reason why certain grubs you have to reel faster to get them to kick. You put them on a heavier jig head, you can fish them deeper and they'll kick versus one that kicks a lot has a lot of lift. So you want to use one that kicks at very slow speed is better in shallow water. Uh, one that kicks at a higher speed is better for deeper water with a heavier jig head. So keep that stuff in mind, guys. This is really going to help you tune it in a lot better if you want to take it to that level. Prism stick, a little tiny jigging spoon. One of the most underrated panfish techniques there is is vertical jigging. You guys see guys ice fishing, right? Vertical jigging. That works year round. If you're out in a boat or off a boat dock, let it get down to the bottom, take a partial reel, get it up about that high over the bottom, and just dance it. Ding, 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 ding. Just dance it. Barely dance it. That irritates panfish to death. Um, my light spinning rod is what I'm going to use that for. Um, but it is okay to also throw it on an ultralight. You don't want to go too heavy. Uh, it's got a decent sized little hook on there, so you can you can horse a bluegill or a red ear in pretty fast with that, but do not underrate a jigging spoon like that. I guarantee you I can go out right now and crush them on that. Here we go, the little beave. It's a tiny white beaver bait. Now, if you cast this out and reel it in, it's going to do nothing. So I see people ask me like, oh, I casted it out and I couldn't get bit on it. Well, what I like, especially white for, is when I see panfish on beds, crappie or red ears or bluegill, uh, white allows you to see it and you can throw it on a heavier jig head and keep it right on their bed and shake it. Now, a beaver bait is for slowly hopping off the bottom. You just want to lift, hop, lift, hop, or kind of just shake your rod tip to where it's kind of just working in place, digging around like that. This is not a cast out and reel in. So I like to fish it on an ultralight. The rod tip's a little bit more limber. I like a little lighter line. I can kind of dance it in place. Um, a beaver bait like that, like I said, cast it out. Work it on the bottom. This is not for the middle of the water column. Don't work it in the middle. Let it fall all the way to the bottom and work it back. I guarantee you'll catch a lot of fish on that. Um, I'll fish this 
Um, if I'm fishing beyond 15 feet deep, I'll fish it on an eighth ounce. And then if I start to get shallower, I'll go with a lighter jig head from there. Um, I like to pair it up with a white jig head at the same time. So keep that in mind. The fill floats a bobber. Now, ooh, that's, a, that's good packaging. I thought it was going to tear open a little easy right there. It looked a little weak. Styrofoam bobber. This thing virtually weighs nothing. I'm sure if someone snuck up and set it on my shoulder, I wouldn't even know it's there. And why would you want such a weightless bobber? If you're trying to cast far, sure, you can use something like a rocket bobber and launch it out there a mile, which is phenomenal. But a lot of the time, if you're taking kids fishing or if you're fishing close to you and you're fishing really light line, like two pound, and the fish are right in front of you, or you want to cast a fly out, this is where something like this can work phenomenally well. You really don't feel it on your line. So if you're fishing very light tackle, fishing for smaller fish, a little styrofoam float like that can work fantastic. Super inexpensive, great quality product. What else do we got right here? Ah, the Mustad live bait. Well, they're, they're long shank hooks, okay? These are size 10. I refer to them as live bait hooks. I set up a double drop shot rig as the weight on the bottom, a hook off the line and a hook off the line, and you nose hook minnows with that, and they work great. You can use little pieces of night crawler, red worm, whatever you want to want, uh, whatever you want to use on that. So that's the January box. Now for the February box. Woo! What do we have? I already opened this. As you can see, I, I wrote February in there, like I said earlier. All right, first bait I see a vicious crankbait. Now this is much larger. Now a lot of people don't know. This is how you catch big red ears. This is how you catch big crappie. It's a slightly larger crankbait. If I put this next to one of my bass crankbaits, you would see that it's not really quite the size of most standard bass crankbaits. This one dives four to eight feet. And uh, it also says you can get down eight to 12. So I'm gonna imagine that's on a lighter line. So I'm thinking four to eight is probably eight pound test. Um, a little bit deeper than that, six. If you want to get it real deep, fish it on four. Um, but remember, if you're diving that deep with a crankbait, you really want to back off your drag. Pure chartreuse, just like that uh, chatterbait I was telling you about earlier. Pure chartreuse, so now we know. It's going to make some noise. It's going to get down. It's going to deflect off some rocks. Semi-stained water to very stained water. Windy days, not calm and clear. But this is going to get you down in there and it's going to move a lot. This is a lot of the time a crankbait's going to force the fish to react. Some days you'll come through there with something subtle, like a grub or a little soft swim bait, and they just won't bite. Then you bring in something like a crankbait and it forces them to react. It's coming through there erratic and they just slap at it out of instinct. This I'm going to start off literally throwing on the six or eight pound with a medium light spinning rod. Crankbait, you want to make a long cast, so the longer the better, so the longer the rod, the better. And that same line, that six to eight pound line, remember deeper, thinner, thicker diameter line, which is your heavier line, it's going to run shallow. So utilize that information to put more fish in the boat or on the bank, depends on where you're fishing from. Lake Lunkers Grubs green grub like this. Now I played around with this grub and this is one of those grubs that I really couldn't get to kick when I'm super slow rolling it, but it has a very large tail. So I went with a slightly heavier jig head and I was fishing it deeper and I got a lot of kick out of that tail. A lot of grubs, the kick's very subtle. This has a bigger, harder kick to it, which is nice because it's a natural looking bait. So I know I can throw it in calmer, cleaner conditions, but it has a little bit more thump, so I might be able to get the fish to react. So that's something to keep in mind. If I have a grub with a small tail, maybe it moves easier at slower speeds. Maybe that's what they want that day. Maybe it's clear and sunny and the fish moved a little bit deeper just out of the sight, which you can see down. Let's say I can see four feet. More than likely, the fish are gonna hold in that four feet and deeper area unless they're inside a tree. So if I'm looking to get down a little bit deeper, I can throw this like on a 132nd ounce jig head and bring it through there and I got a bigger tail. It's natural, it's got a lot of kick. It's kind of like a green pumpkin color, the ones I got here, which is an extremely versatile color for every type of fish out there uh, that eats moving things that's not eating off the bottom eating plant life if it's moving and fish eat it they love green pumpkin and light brown i, I don't know why that is um the crappie flipper this is like a little tiny white plastic bait with 
dual appendages, almost like a crawfish. This is going to be a really good bed fishing for bait, uh, bed fishing bait. When all those red ears move up and crappie move up into the trees and I see them guarding, I can bounce it down there. That white. Now let me tell you something about white. It's not just for you to see. When you look at the color white, what it reflects, see the sun on my skin out here? If I'm getting a sunburn, it's UVA radiation, which is a light. Those fish that live super deep can see UV. And even when the water's really, really muddy and the sun comes out, white still reflects UV. So a lot of people say use like dark black or dark blue when the water's muddy. No, use something like white. It stands out and they can see the UVA reflection off of it. So if you got muddy water still, try a white bait just like this and I get, I bet you, you will start catching panfish on that. Very cool little bait by Cream right there. Here we go, Mr. Crappie Slippers slip bobbers now i showed you the other bobbers earlier that's a fixed bobber you crimp it onto your line that's for fishing relatively shallow if you got a five foot rod it might be hard for you to cast uh over a four foot long leader so if you had four foot line down and you crimped your bobber way up here that might be difficult to cast so a slip bobber is as simple as this you see a little tube in there with a knot. You run your line through that little tube and you pull that knot off of that little sleeve and you fasten it on your line. You can fasten it 20 feet up your line. Then you put a little bead on there and then the line runs directly through the center of that bobber. Okay, So you'll have a knot, a bead, and a bobber that slides up and then you tie your lure down here. Well as your lure falls, all of that slides up to meet the knot and your lure falls down. Tour, when you're casting, you have one tight package, everything's together, and you can fish much deeper with a slip bobber. These are really cool. I've had the chance to fish these for American Shad and for crappie. I really like them a lot. Here we go, little craw, 1.5 inch craw. Now, chartreuse with red tips, little tiny crawfish style bait right here. Well. Obviously, I'm gonna say I'm gonna use this for bed fishing, sure. I'm gonna fish this in semi-stained water, sure. When that water temperature starts hitting like close to 60 degree, guys, 60 degrees in the spring or whenever it hits 60 degrees in your area, a lot of those juvenile crawfish come back out to play. And if those fish are in the area and it's just warming up, crawfish is a high protein meal. Show them a little crawfish as soon as that water temperature starts getting around 60 degrees and I guarantee you will get bit. They will not pass a juvenile crawfish. And that right there, that's gonna work in that dingy water. It's gonna work in that real green water. It's gonna work good in around that grass. Same thing, little exposed jig head is gonna get you a lot of bites. The lighter the jig head, the more subtle it's gonna fall. So if you have a lot of grass, use a light jig head and it won't dig into the grass. A lot of the time it'll just sit on there and they'll come up and pick it off. Uh, but if you have a rocky bottom, go with a heavier jig head. Because as you drag that jig head, it looks more erratic and it looks more like the crawfish is in a defensive position or trying to shoot out and get under something. And a lot of time it'll kick up a little dirt and that really intrigues those panfish to come over and hammer it. And you're going to catch a ton of bass on that thing, too. I've, I've done it all the time. Uh, the Southern Pro Black Grub right here. This is a 1.5-inch grub. I've had the opportunity to use these Southern Pro grubs for a couple years now. Absolutely love these grubs. When do I use a black grub? I will use a black grub when the water's very dirty. Like I said, white reflects UVA, but black always stands out when the water is dirty. If you out run in and it's hard to see in there, a black grub is gonna stand out and it's gonna get bit. Another thing about a black grub, a lot of the time when you see fish spawn and bass spawn, you have a lot of juvenile bass that come out black. Crappie love to eat bass fry those little black bass fry, crappie love to eat them. So if you see a lot of bass fry around, you see a male bass guarding, he's got his big school of little bass fry around, throw a black grub. If there's panfish around, they love it. They love to eat those black grubs. Um, this, you can use a really light jig head. The tail kicks at very slow speed to where you can fish over really shallow grass. Um, if you wanna take it down, don't go up to an eighth ounce quick, kind of fish something in between and let it get down there. The slower you can move this with that tail moving, the better. Um, I'm gonna fish that on ultralight the majority of the time. And with a grub, it is a search bait, so you do wanna make longer cast and cover water. And I find more often than not, just slow rolling it works way better than yo-yoing it or dancing it around. The crappie spins, a basically a spinner bait. Let me open this up for you without stabbing myself. 
There we go. A crappie spin. There you go. It's a spinner bait, all right? You see this head down here? You need to rig a plastic on there, whether you put one of those grubs on there. I put a pink grub, an example for the underwater video here. You want to put something on there. Now you see this, basically this is a teardrop shape blade on there. That's referred to as an Indiana blade. A pure round one is a Colorado blade. The willow shape one is referred to as a willow. Now, the more rounded the blade, the more thump it kicks off, the more noise, the bigger displacement. Bigger displacement often means bigger meal to a predator fish. You might be able to get a bigger crappie or a bigger red ear or a bigger yellow perch throwing something like a spinner. Where these work when that water's 55 to 65 degrees, these work substantially well. That's in the spring, that's in the fall. Overcast days, early in the morning, later in the evening, these are a great search bait. This is the one I'm gonna throw on uh, a medium light on like six pound line. And I'm gonna make very long cast and slow roll this back. I'm gonna use this to make and cover a lot of area, a lot of water until I get bit and find out where they're at. But when it's low light or when it's windy, these are a phenomenal deal right here, guys. These are the Southern Pro Crappie Spin. If you're not throwing these early in the morning, later in the evening, windy days, uh, you're really missing out because these are a great tool for covering a lot of water fast and getting that bigger bite. That's it for January and February's box, guys. I hope you picked up some new information from this. Make sure to subscribe to the Lucky Tackle Box channel below. If you like this video, make sure to go watch all of our other ones. We've got a lot of great talent working for the company, teaching you guys how to catch fish. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.